Hello everyone and welcome back for another microbit video. In today's lesson we're going to be looking at the idea of conditional operators and we would use these with our if statements and our while statements to set conditions under which we want them to run. Uh, we're going to use the accelerometer to demonstrate how this works. So I'm going to start off as we always do with from microbit import star. I'll give myself a couple of lines. And uh, so I'm going to start off with a program that let's make it keep running uh, while un until we press the bu until we press button A. So while oops while not button A was pressed brackets colon indent. Okay, so was button A pressed? No, and then we inverse that by saying not. So while it was not pressed, keep doing the loop. Fair enough. Uh, and so let's just quickly test that this works. I can do, let's say, display.show. Let's put the hash symbol on there or something like that. Uh, and then when we finish, display.clear. We can turn off the screen. How's that? Or let, let's, let's do something a little more. Let's put in, we've been playing around with numbers. So let's put in a number here. And let's loop through this, adding one to it every time. And then display, scroll, show the number, and put in a quick little pause. So that's nothing fancy. Until we hit button A, we're going to add one to it every time. So if I flash that onto my micro bit, we should see it it show one, two, three, four, five, and uh, move on. So one, two, three. Okay, so we know that the loop is working, and then when I press the button, it will stop. Okay, so that works. I don't actually need the, uh, the numbers in there, but it's always good practice. All right, so to read the x, y, and z coordinates from the accelerometer, we create three variables, one for each axis. So x, y, z equals accelerometer dot get values. All right, so this is a function that reads from the accelerometer, reads its current x, y, and z coordinates, and puts them into three variables, x, y, z. So if I wanted to, again, uh, let's just do this as another quick little proof of concept. If I put the, whatever number is in X and put in a little 200 sleep, we can, we'll can we see that we are reading the X coordinate of the accelerometer. And this number will range from about negative 2,000 to positive 2,000. All right, so you can see here at the moment the, the X value is giving me the number 4 or the number 8, okay, the number 12. If I tilt my... Uh, my micro bit this way, All right? Minus four three two. All right, so that tilting it uh, to the left goes negative, and if I tilt it to the right hand side, All right, six two zero. All right, if I tilt it a little less, four zero zero. Tilt it a little less, two two eight, All right, and it will stop when I hit the button because that's what we've told our loop to do. Okay, so we are successfully reading the x coordinate. So the x coordinate measures tilting left and right. The y coordinate tilt is the measure of the tilt forward and back. And then the z coordinate is actually up and down movement, but I haven't quite been able to get the z coordinate to work the way I would expect. So um, someone might have to correct me on what's going on with that one. But x and y definitely work as you would expect. So we're going to use uh, these coordinates to actually do something interesting. So you, you kind of saw there, okay, uh, minus 100, you know, minus 200, positive 100, that kind of thing. So let's use that to show arrows showing which, which way is down. And so for this, we're going to use some if statements. So instead of uh, display scroll, and so I'm just going to say if, my x value is less than minus 100. Let's 
display show the arrow that points this way, all right? So north, south, east and west so i want the west arrow so arrow west and if x is bigger than 100 display dot show image dot arrow east let's put this onto the micro bit and see what it does what i haven't done is well what do we want it to show if it's neither of those so at the moment, the display is clear. If I point that way, right, so which way I point? But when I've, when I've got it flat, it doesn't really, you know, it's still pointing one way or the other. So let's turn these into an elif statement. All right, so now that's made this if statement linked to the previous one. So, because it'll run this, and it's only if that is not true that it will then ask this question. And now let's also put in an else. So fail safe, display, show, let's just put in the hyphen character. All right, so we, we are flat. Put that onto my micro bit. All right, so now I've got the hyphen and then I've got arrow, arrow, arrow and then hyphen when it's flat all right so con doing conditional operators all right which was the purpose of the video this part here all right, we have the less than symbol so I'm just using a variable and a number so I could remember the variable it Python will just look up whatever the value is inside it and compare it so if it was minus 200 and something minus 200 is less than minus 100 and so this would return true and so it would run the indented code. If the number was, say, 50, right, then this would return false, and so it would ignore the indented code and come down and ask the next question. Is x greater than 100? Well, if it's 50, it's not, so it'll skip that line. Else, so if none of the above have been true, show the hyphen, which is what it's doing right now. All right, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we can actually turn this into a little bit of a game fairly easily. Uh, so I might just copy and paste this into a new file. And let's have a little uh, ball that's moving across on the screen. And if it falls off the edge, the game is over, we lose. How can I go about doing that? So I'm going to create a couple of little variables up the top for my row and my column. All right, and I'm going to do, 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 let's delete this. So just to show what I'm uh, thinking about here, uh, we're gonna turn on an individual LED on the display. And to use that, we use display, whoops, dot set pixel. Right, and you see here we can set an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and then a brightness value. All right, so the only catch to know with the X and Y coordinates uh, is that the position numbers start from zero. Uh, computer programming languages always count from zero. So zero, one, two, three, four uh, is our X coordinates, and then zero, one, two, three, four are our Y coordinates or our rows. So at my X coordinate, which is my column, oops, and at my Y coordinate, which is my row, I'm gonna turn on the brightness of nine. And I'm gonna dis display, clear the display immediately before doing that so that wherever the pixel was before, um, it, it's been erased and then replaced with this. Uh, and now this isn't gonna do anything too fancy, it's just gonna light up the center light. And so, uh, as, um, as my, per my earlier advice on programming techniques, um, every time I'm making a, a small change, I am testing my code just to see what's going on. So, from here, 
I want to use my X and Y coordinates to change my row and column. So let's use the uh, same numbers I had before. Uh, use a boundary of about 100. So if X is less than 100, I want to move to the left. All right, because I'm tilting it that way, so a little imaginary ball will start falling down. So, uh, sorry, if it's less than negative 100. All right, so in that instance, I want to take whatever column number I'm in and subtract one from it. Uh, if my x value is bigger than positive 100, then I want to move my column to the right. So I'm going to add one to it. So whatever is in column, add whatever is inside column, add one to it. Save it back into column. Uh, if my y coordinate is less than minus 100, uh, let's go up a row. So subtract one from it. And if my y coordinate is greater than positive 100, row is equal to row plus 1. And now we'll find that this will start moving around the screen. We might just put in a sm small little sleep command in here just to uh, do, 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 do. let's just call it game. Uh, flash. Yeah, this is going to. There will be a problem in a second that I'll pretty quickly find. Okay, so we got a line error. You saw that the ball started in the middle and then quickly moved down, which it would because it's tilting that way. Right, and basically what happened is we changed our row or column number to be a value outside the acceptable range. Uh, we went past the number four. So we need to make sure that that does not happen. So if our row becomes larger than four, we can say game over is equal to true. All right, and so I can come up here instead of saying, instead of ending this, um, actually, instead of, let's call it keep playing. Then we don't need to deal with knots. So keep playing is false. All right, so the game is over. So instead of ending it on button press, let's end it on, let's say, while well, we want to keep playing. And so I will create a keep playing value up here and set it to true. So we'll start the game and while keep playing is true, it will keep it will keep running through our loop. And if our row becomes bigger than four, we've fallen off the edge. So keep playing becomes false. We can do this with all the others, right? So I can say if row becomes less than zero, keep playing. All right, but there's actually also a quicker way we can do this. We can put all of the because we need to also do it with our columns, we can put all of these into one line. And how can I do that? We can use the AND or the OR statements. So, what do I mean? If row is bigger than four, OR row is less than zero, OR column is bigger than four, OR column is less than zero. So now if any of these things are true, so if that is true, or this is true, or this is true, or this is true. If any of those four things are true, change this value. Set keep playing to false, and that will end the game. Uh, so we could even, let's put in here, display scroll, game over. So now, when I flash this, All right, the ball is in the middle, and if I tilt it, it will move around. And if I let it fall off the edge, <laughs> I got a line error, so I've messed something up. Line 26, ah, because I've set keep playing to false, but then I still try to draw onto that particular round column. Uh, and so what I want to do is I only want to do this if we, you know, if this um, didn't happen. So I can turn this into an else statement here and indent those two things so that they only run if none of those things are true. Now if I flash it, 
Uh, so we're already up to a 30 line piece of code, um, you know, for what would be a fairly simple game. But now if I fall off the edge, I get game over. Well, this is pretty cool. Let's add one last thing to it. Let's add some scores. All right, score is equal to zero. And as long as we keep the ball in play, let's add one to the score. And then when the game is over, we can display scroll. Your score was and then display scroll score. All right, and so now, here we go, let's game over. Your score. was and how well did I do six there we go I got six points I'm sure you can do much better than that uh, but that is an, enough of an introduction into conditional operators which was the purpose of it uh, using the greater than and less than symbols uh, we um, yeah um, if we want to compare if a value is exactly 100 it's probably some of the one that I should have mentioned. Okay, the equal to. So the equal to is actually a double equal sign. Okay, so less than we use the less than, sorry, the greater than is the greater than symbol. Less than is the less than symbol. And to check if it's equals, it's actually two equal signs. Uh, but other than that, everything else follows as we've done here. All right, this is Mr. Baumgarten signing off.